And now, Six Sports presents the Dean Trailways fifth quarter. For a lot of our high school football teams, conference titles were claimed last week, but there was still plenty on the line tonight in week eight. Thanks for tuning in to the Dean Trailways fifth quarter. I'm Ian Kress. Can you believe it's already week oh, eight? Oh, it's hard to believe, yes. Time is flying, <laughs> and I'm Haley Schoengart. Portland locked up the CAAC white title outright last week and needed a win tonight to go undefeated in conference play for the third <laughs> year in a row. Pretty good. Portland had a 14-0 lead at the half. Third quarter, Raiders QB Dominic Navarro finds running back Caden Dickerson. Let me tell you, that duo is lethal. Dickerson goes 20 yards to the house, Portland up 20-0. You know the saying, if it ain't broke, well, don't fix That's it. Right. Fourth quarter, Navarra this time goes to Nolan Zibtowski, who could not be taken down. Dude was shedding defenders left and right. The Raiders <laughs> win 33-zip the final to complete the undefeated CAAC White Quest. But more importantly, head coach John Navarra captured his 200th win tonight. You know, I've, got, I've worked with a lot of great staff members. I got a great staff here at Portland. We've been, been together for a long time. We've got great kids that work hard all, every, every year. Um, it's awesome to see some of the guys come back. Um, just appreciate everybody here. Like, love this little town. It means everything. Um, <laughs> No one, not a lot of people have accomplished that. I mean, 200 wins is it's insane. I remember when he got 100 wins, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And I, I, it's so awesome. He's done he's done everything for this football program, and I'm very thankful for him. Oh yeah, he is one heck of a coach, <laughs> yes. that is for sure. Well, if you were with us last week, at the end of the show, we mentioned we had a surprise this week. Yeah, for the last year, we've been a team of three, you guys have <laughs> noticed. And that's when we bring in the third member of our team, Tyler Driesinga, who is with the newest member of our ah. sports department. Yeah, look, guys, I got a friend over here. This is Desherian McBroom, who completes our sports department. And Desherian, our sports department is now a house divided with you and Haley. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, uh, Kentucky and Louisville fans over here, but joining as another Kentuckian here from Louisville, Kentucky. Can you say Louisville, Tyler? <laughs> Louisville, I definitely. Haley's taught me how to pronounce that one. That's for sure. So we got that correctly, but I do come from our sister station in Evansville, Indiana, and I'm so ready to get started with this team, Tyler. Yeah, we're excited to have you here to share in. Let's get back to some more highlights. Parma Western hosting has it. We pick up the action in the fourth quarter. Parma Western's Jaden Willis is shaking and baking all across the field. He cuts it to the opposite sideline. It's finally knocked out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. First and goal for the Panthers. Moments later, Willis will punch it in for the Panther touchdown. Parma down 21 to 18 with just over nine minutes to go in the game. So they need a stop to get the ball back and they get it right here. Kobe Tripp rips the ball out and Cole Archer is going to pounce on it. Panthers get the football back. They drive all the way down into the red zone, but then they take a shot to the end zone for the lead, and it's picked off by Hazlitt's Dontrell Dennis. A huge turnover for the Viking defense. They run out the clock on the ensuing drive and hang on for an impressive road win, 21 to 18, the final. And the Ionia Bulldogs on the road against St. John Red Wings. Second quarter, Bryce Patel rolls out left. He's drilled on the play, but airs it out deep to Michael Oberlin, who lays out for a big catch and the big gain for the Red Wings. They're driving, and at the 10, Patel rolls out left again. This time, throws it up high to Spencer Nobis, who goes up and just snags it over the defender for the touchdown, but St. John's would miss the field goal. Ionia is still up 7-6 going into the half. In the third, Oberlin gets the handoff. Bounces off a would-be tackler and then brushes off this tackler right there. Heads up the sideline for 25 yards on the play, but the Red Wings would have to give the ball back to the Bulldogs. Nolan Hart rolls out to pass for the Bulldogs. Finds Tristan Siganik, who hustles up the sideline right here. Going to stop on a dime. Makes both Ooh, defenders miss. Eventually knocked out of bounds, but not before picking up that first down, Tyler. And that was set up Spencer Tuker, who caps off the drive, getting the handoff 
bounces outside and he's in for that touchdown. Ionia takes the lead 13 to 6. They would go for the two point conversion, but wouldn't get it. But they wouldn't need it. Ionia gets the win 16 13, a big non conference win for the Bulldogs. All right, you're a natural to share in. Welcome to the team. It's time for our first time out of the night. But when we come back, we have a goody of a matchup on deck. Yeah, that's right. It was a regional final rematch between Mason and Wald Lake Western. Would the Warriors get revenge after last season? Plus, Jackson Lumen Christie is known for playing multiple divisions up. Tonight, no different. We'll check in with the reigning state champs after the break. Look for the U.S. Army Fan Zone each week at the Six Sports Game of the Week. Try your skill at games, win great prizes, and more. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. If you knowingly sold a car with faulty brakes and someone got hurt, you'd get sued or worse. But Tom Barrett took money from drug company lobbyists and voted to allow near absolute immunity for Big Pharma when they sell dangerous or defective drugs. The same drug companies raking in record profits while we pay high prices. Barrett gets the cash, drug companies get off scot-free, Michiganders get hurt. HMP is responsible for the content of this ad. End of year is coming with insurance deductibles resetting in January. Now is the perfect time to schedule an appointment with Advanced Audiology. Let us provide you with a customized hearing solution today. Hearing starts here at Advanced Audiology. According to official documents, Curtis Hertel signed a hush agreement to negotiate giving millions of your tax dollars to a company controlled by China. Later, Hertel votes for the deal and gets campaign contributions from the law firm lobbying for it. Sir, tell why'd you have to give tax dollars to the Chinese Communist Party? A threat to Michigan, a sweetheart deal, thanks to liberal lobbyist Curtis Hertel. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this ad. A flood of illegals, skyrocketing prices, global chaos, and Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Nothing will change with Kamala. More weakness, more war, more welfare for illegals, and even more taxes. Only President Trump cut middle class taxes, and only President Trump will do it again. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Financial questions are everywhere. Only Daniel Mahoney can answer. Mahoney's nonprofit took money from donors wanting to help the community, donations totaling over $100,000. But Mahoney didn't file tax returns on those contributions. Then a request came for Mahoney's group to receive $2 million from Michigan taxpayers. The IRS revoked their status as a nonprofit, and an IRS complaint has been filed to investigate. Too many questions, no answers. We can't trust dishonest Daniel Mahoney with our tax dollars. Disability Connections is thrilled to have Dr. Temple Grandin as keynote speaker during the inclusion event at the Michigan Theater in Jackson on October 30th. This prominent autistic author will share her unique perspective inside the narrative of autism. Call or click for more info. Welcome back. We've seen a lot of big time catches on the fifth quarter over the years and one that earned the title of our six sports play of the year last year was Caleb Parrish's one handed snag <laughs> over Wald Lake Western last year. Who could forget that one? Oh. If you remember, Parrish had a broken hand, so he was wearing a club. The walk off touchdown resulted in Mason winning <laughs> its third straight regional title. Tonight, Mason and Wald Lake Western met once again. And it was just as good. The Mason <laughs> band had its light show at halftime. The game itself just as sweet as this. The Bulldogs were leading 7-3 at the break. And the Warriors came out on their first drive of the second half. And running back Lucas Price would find the end zone to give Wald Lake Western its first lead. 
Mason would then respond with Colin Winters knocking home a field goal in the third quarter to tie the game up at 10. And Mason would get the ball back after the Warriors retook the lead on a field goal and quarterback Kaysen Carswell swings it out to Hayden Hendrickson and check out this run. Hop, skip, and a do. He's going to run through a defender on his way for a huge gain. A part of a 100-yard receiving night for him and Hendrickson wasn't done there. Same drive. Carswell drops a dime to him in the end zone as Mason takes the lead 17-13 with under six minutes to play. Then with under two minutes to go, Wald Lake Western was going for the lead in the connection of Donovan Triplett and Troy Temple leads to the Warriors taking a three point lead. So Mason would march down the field in the final moments, had a chance to send things to overtime on a 32 yard field goal, but the kick goes wide right as time expires. Mason falls in a heartbreaker to Wald Lake Western tonight, 20 to 17. Wow, what a game. Well, two weeks ago, yeah. Fowler took down rival Puamo Westphalia 14 to 11 yeah. to capture the coveted Milk Jug Trophy. Yeah, and with that win, it set up the Eagles for a chance to capture the CMAC title outright tonight. All they had to do was beat Lanesburg. And Lanesburg, like I said, on the road against Fowler as the Eagles host their senior night, and they soared in this one. Lanesburg fourth down, Alex Hoffman with the block, and Joe Epke comes up with it, making some special plays on special teams. That was set up Ford Phillips, who gets in on the action, gets the toss, and he takes it in for 12 yards for the touchdown. He had a big night. Fowler leads seven zip. Next possession this time from seven yards out. It's Phillips again. Bouncing off would-be tacklers, takes it in for the touchdown. They're up 14 zip. Ensuing kickoff, Nate Malone is going to get it. Bounces through the gap. Kadich comes in and forces the fumble, and Brady Fieldish, Fieldsposh recovers it on the play. The Eagles, and this time it's Asher Kunishnak who gets the handoff from the four, rushes in, and he's in the end zone for the score for another touchdown. Eagles up 21 zip. Phillips in this one finished with 310 yards on 14 carries, <laughs> and he got eight touchdowns on senior all? night. What a way to close out the last re regular season game at home. They went 69-14, Tyler. Dang, that's nice. Moving things right along, Puwama Westphalia took the trek into Red Hawk country to face Saranac. Things were tied 7-7 in the second. The Pirates stuck to what they know best running the rock. Ty Phelan with the quarterback keeper, a speedy QB. Hmm. Pirates take a one score lead, but not for long. Still in the second quarterback, Cody Whipple, that is Saranac quarterback, hands it off to Chase Stevens. He does the rest going virtually untouched into the end zone. This game was a battle. PW would actually come back and win this thing. 33-28 the final. Down in Jackson, Lumen Christie looking to avenge its only loss from last season against Gaylord. Second quarter, standout running back Cadell Williams escapes a tackle, and then he's going to cut back toward the middle of the field before finally being brought down after a 19-yard gain and a Titan first down. Later, Jackson Lumen Christie caps off the drive with a handoff to Isaac Rayberg. He scampers into the end zone to put the Titans on top 14 to 7. Gaylord responds by marching down the field with an eight-play drive. And Andrew Zemaniak finishes it off with a touchdown run around the right edge. 14 to 13, Lumen Christie. Then with just 18 seconds to go in the half, Lumen Christie looking to create some separation before the break. But the pass is tipped and picked off by Jaron Bensinger. So just a one-point game at halftime, the Blue Devils gave the Titans another great challenge tonight. But this year, Lumen Christie was able to pull away in the second half and pick up its sixth straight win, 37 to 20, the final. <laughs> Well, the trip around our area football games tonight is almost complete. We have one more conference we have to pay a visit to. No shot we weren't <laughs> talking about the CAAC Blue tonight. DeWitt has shut out its last two opponents. Would they make it three tonight? <laughs> Plus, Plus, Lansing Everett is just behind the Panthers in the conference standings. We will have the highlights between their class with Holt after the break. The Dean Trailways fifth quarter is sponsored by Dean Trailways of Michigan. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. 
Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. We love giving back to the community because the community has been so good to us. Innover has been so great to work with by designing our new space within a budget. If you're looking for new office furniture or office design, I highly recommend them. Financial questions are everywhere. Only Daniel Mahoney can answer. Mahoney's nonprofit took money from donors wanting to help the community, donations totaling over $100,000. But Mahoney didn't file tax returns on those contributions. Then a request came for Mahoney's group to receive $2 million from Michigan taxpayers. The IRS revoked their status as a nonprofit, and an IRS complaint has been filed to investigate. Too many questions, no answers. We can't trust dishonest Daniel Mahoney with our tax dollars. Mapes Furniture October Harvest Sale is on. It's our biggest sale of the year, with store-wide savings on beautiful furniture for every room in your home. Mapes Furniture is a big store in a little town, with a huge selection of the latest furniture styles, bedroom, living room, dining room, and accessories, including capital bedding mattress sets, and our exclusive line of Amish furniture, all at Harvest Sale Savings right now. Interest-free terms available. The October Harvest Sale, now in progress, at Mapes Furniture, the big store in the little town, Sunfield. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Donald Trump makes a lot of promises, but we can be sure of one thing. If he wins, he'll ignore all checks that rein in a president's power. It's all in Trump's Project 2025 agenda. What does that mean for you? Higher cost on groceries, cuts to Social Security and Medicare, more tax breaks for billionaires, and a national abortion ban putting women's health at risk. A second Trump term, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. We love giving back to the community because the community has been so good to us. We are so grateful to Innovare for their design and furniture that they've given to Ellie's Place. It's helped make a warm, comfortable space. Thank you, Innovare. Welcome back. It's no secret DeWitt's offense loves to find the end zone this season. Yeah, get a load of this stat. Through seven games, the Panthers are averaging a whopping 57 points per game. I mean, that's a basketball score. <laughs> yeah, score. pretty close. The Zim Zone was rocking tonight as the undefeated Panthers were taking on Okemos. And the DeWitt defense was on the prowl early. A strip sack is going to be picked up by DeWitt's Gavin Dusso, And he's going to do the scoop and score to increase the lead for the Panthers. Then on offense, it can't be a DeWitt highlight without Mr. Elliot Larner as the senior quarterback is going to take the snap, hands it off to his twin brother, Abram Larner, who's going to snap a couple ankles on his way to the end zone for the touchdown. Then in the second quarter, Elliot Larner is going to throw it up for Central Michigan commit Jaden Bender, who's going to make the grab to extend the lead. This is all DeWitt as they win 62 nothing to claim at least a share of the CAAC blue title. Sticking in the blue, Waverly took on the Trojans of East Lansing tonight in the third. Waverly on offense, the only issue, it finds the hands of Jalen Gillespie Lane. The senior has a couple of blockers and takes it all the way for a pick six. My guy was hauling <laughs> out there, EL in front, 38 zip. This wouldn't be the Trojans' only takeaway tonight. The next drive, Waverly's QB gets hit. Nevion Yardbro says, yep, yeah, you know, I'll think I'll take it from here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yardbro has got some room. After a penalty, the Trojans would actually be set up real nice and cushy in the red zone. In the fourth, EL quarterback, there's the flag right there. BJ Artister hands it off. Avion Smith wasn't letting anyone slow him down. The Trojans topple the Warriors 54-8. All right, well, Everett was on the road tonight taking on Holt as the Vikings were looking to bounce back from a loss to EL last week. On Everett's first drive of the game, Ethan Melville, Holt's quarterback, comes up with the interception to give the ball back to the Rams on offense. And Melville would then hand it off to standout junior running back Ladon Hatcher, who breaks free for a big game. Hatcher finished with 117 yards tonight. However, the drive would stall out, forcing the Rams to punt and average Karan Turnley comes up with the big time block. Second quarter now, the Vikings were near the goal line and quarterback Najee Davidson is going to run in the first score of the game. Everett goes on to win 29-20 over Holt. The Vikings will take on DeWitt next week and with a win, they can claim a share of the CAAC Blue title.